The time has come! It's here! It's, it's Christmas here. Eve! It's here! It's Christmas Eve! Free agency is right around the corner, so when you're watching this, free agency is tomorrow. Tomorrow! So, here is the deal. Things are gonna be crazy. Now, this is what you need to know. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Now, the, the free agency uh, starter kit. Yeah. Presented by him. Oh, thanks. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks presented by hashtag sports. Listen, you, you gotta just. As crazy as things have been with the Buffalo Bills offseason, every guy that gets cut, they should get signed. What do you think of this guy? What do you yeah. think of this guy? What do you think of this guy? All this other stuff. Even we have fallen victim to that. It's I'm fine. Not gonna, you're not immune to it's it. It's fine. It's okay. All right? You just got to take it with a grain of salt. But here's some of the things. From 4 until 5 tomorrow, we're gonna, we have a lot of work to do. All hell breaks loose. Yes, it is. It's All the purge. It is. It's the purge from 4 it to is. 5 tomorrow. It is. I now, cannot the, wait. Now, here's the deal. The, the 4 to 5... Uh, is where all deals get locked down, right? So you have the legal tampering period, quote unquote, big finger Legal quotes. tampering right. period, so which that, was yesterday yeah. until today. Yeah, so the 11th uh, yeah. at noon until 4 o'clock, 3.59 Eastern Standard Time um, on the 13th. That's the legal tampering window, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when teams can discuss uh, contracts with impending free agents. So technically not free agents until 4 o'clock on March 13th. So once 4 o'clock hits, all these players that are impending free agents are actually free agents. Now, a lot of deals will be basically announced, right? I always liken it to, like, a bull rider sitting on the bull before they open the gate. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. it is. They're like, it is. okay, it is. Uh, here we go. Oh, oh, no. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Then we go. free agency. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Because, really, the legal tampering period, a, a player will announce... You know, a deal. The team still has a day and a half to go back and try and re-sign that yeah, player because so, they're still they're still a free agent. So there was probably stuff that will get released today that is, oh, they're going here for this much, and then all of a sudden you see them sign for yeah. more money at another team. Right. So, yeah. So that, be careful. Right. You, it, just because you see a deal announced today doesn't mean that it's happening. It's not written in stone until four o'clock on the thirteenth. That's the deal. Yeah. So with that being said major names always on the move and the Bills have a lot of needs right they have a yes. ton of needs yes and they're going to be connected to a lot of former players that they have familiarity with yes um but the most fascinating thing about free agency to me is the fact that the Bills have a war chest and I don't think they're going to spend as much money as people think they're going to spend oh I, they're not they're not throw once again, have to budget that $10 million for the draft class. Mm -hmm. If they plan on drafting all those picks, I don't foresee them taking all those picks. I, yeah, that's them, what happens. I, they're not going to have 10 um, draft picks by the time all those No, they're over. not. And, and th believe me, too, the thing about the, the free agency, which is interesting, is that picks can move as well. We saw it last year with the Jets and the Colts. Yep. So they were very, you know, they were, speaking of war chests, I mean, the Jets just gave Colts pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, you're going to see all these guys, all these names come up. The one thing we didn't really talk about, and we may talk about it later, is what if the Bills re-signed Mills and Miller to longer-term deals, and oh they just couldn't God. do it before the free agency? Find a bridge and drive me <laughs> off. <laughs> but the interesting part about it is that, well, even though that one-hour period is pretty much chaotic, and it'll last until like 6 and 7, 8 at night. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that window. That is... The thing about that is it'll set the bar per position. <laughs> so people bar. <laughs> Anthony Barr. <laughs> no, no, I hope you. But anyway, <laughs> no. But like everyone likes to talk about. All right, why did this guy sign for this? So it's almost like the waiting game for certain players. So yep. as you know, all right, this this player this player X wide receiver signed a three year thirty million dollar deal. Right. So it's ten a year. That's the bar. The right. first one's always set it, and then okay. Then other teams that start to negotiate for certain players, they start saying, okay, well, I'm worth more than him. 
I'm right. younger. I should get. So well, that's Palantir's what happened. Pouncey's a perfect example. Pouncey signs an oh. extension at 11 mil per season. He's and in his Pouncey, 30s, though. Exactly. So that means that you know all the centers on the market were like, Pouncey signed for 11 million. He's you know he's two years away from retirement. That's great for me. Yes. Because now it's like, oh well, Pouncey's worth 11 million. I'm four years younger. So, you know, what are we gonna do about that? Yep. Right? Yep. It's, it, it, it is amazing how all this works because it's all about comparables. So, if you're following free agency, you need to pay attention to players in similar age circumstances. You need to look at comparable players because that's how free agency is always based off of. It's based off of market value, so age and value. So, like, if Antonio Brown were to hit the open market right now, Yes, he's an elite level player, but he's 31 years old. Mm -hmm. So what do other 31 wide like 31 year old wide receivers do? Like what have yeah. you done? <clears throat> what are you going to do? That's the big part because there's the yeah. okay, you you have 700 receptions, but you're 31 years old. Right. You're not going to have 700 more. Right. Like well, um, the Charles Clay contract is a perfect example of that. The Bills signed Charles Clay to that contract because of the age of the player he was, not the production that he had. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. So we're all sitting here pissed about the Charles Clay contract three years down the road, but the truth of the matter is we paid him based off of what we thought his career arc was going to be his career didn't arc that way no 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 right and that's how free agency goes you know it's you mentioned pouncy i want to mention a name sure quincy and oh yeah signed really early that's so, it. people are going to forget about him yeah that's why that's because yeah, when about we first contract. talked about it you were like they gave him nine million a year what was it uh four for 36 or something, something like, that? like that yeah so you're like he got nine million nine million watch what happens to some of the wide receiver contracts that people are because you know what, some some people might say some people may use Brown's contract currently before he restructures it and everything. They may use that as a you know well, a noon was getting nine, Brown's getting twelve. You're not you may be better than a noon one, but you're not better than Brown. So right. they may say okay, you're yeah. getting eleven five or right. ten five or something like that. Right. So it's always like you got to look at some you got to kind of dig back a little bit. It's who has signed contracts or extensions. So far, look at their age, look at their production, mm -hmm. look at the potential. Because right. if they're in their mid twenty, mid to late twenties, and they still have more than half their career left, mm -hmm. that's what happens. I mean, because they they right. signing guys. But the interesting wrench that's thrown in here, new CBA. Yeah. You negotiate the new CBA this year or next uh, year? I think it expires at the end of this year, so they okay. have to go back to the table. Next because a year. lot of guys last year, if it expires at the end of next year. End of this year, a lot of guys only signed two-year deals last year, yeah, because they want to know what the new CBA will bring. Them. Right, exactly. Yeah. So. so the collective bargaining agreement throws a monkey wrench into things because it changes veteran minimums and you know years of service and things like that. The players really gave up a ton of control they in did. the last CBA. They did. I know that they there were certain things that were hot button issues that they wanted to accomplish and they got the most of those done, but it came with a, a pretty steep cost with the way the CBA was structured. We could talk about that in another episode, yeah. but um, the fact still remains like you have players like Tyrell Williams out there, mm -hmm. right? You're going to look at Tyrell, you're, yeah, he's going to get some money, but you're going to look at the Quincy and Nunwa contract. I think that's a perfect comparison yep. because Tyrell Williams has been healthier than Quincy and Nunwa. Yep. When, you know, Keenan Allen wasn't there, Tyrell Williams was the number one wide receiver. Quincy Nunwa was never asked to be a number one wide receiver, only by attrition. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I, I think there's some good comparables out there. Um, and you're going to have to look at the Bills specifically along the line because the Bills missed out on acquiring uh, some, you know, wh who was it? Uh, the Cardinals acquired um, a tackle from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh for what, a fifth or sixth round pick? I mean, wouldn't you That's want a starting value as well, yeah. Right. Wouldn't you want a starting tackle at, at a six round pick? On the number one would. line. Yeah. Number one line. I think they're yeah. they, they rated number one. Yeah, they were. They yeah. were rated the number one line of football uh, last year. That so, could have been it. But that's, you know, I think it's fascinating because all those things show you where the Bills are thinking, right? Yes. Where their head is. And free agency is coming up. You expect the Bills to be spenders in free agency. I expect the Bills not to be spenders because they already got 50 plus guys on the roster. So they're going to have to cut guys that were on the team last year. If they bring anybody else in, so you figure they're going to draft 10 players, let's say they sign five in free agency, that's 15 players they're bringing into the fold. They've already got fifth. They've already got a full team. Do you know how we made fun of? Well, we didn't make fun of him, but Duke Williams. As of right now, the salary cap consists of the top fifty-one contracts. Yes. Duke Williams is an not out of it. Yeah. You know who else is it? Who? Levi Wallace. Oh yeah. He just dropped below it. Yeah. But as of yeah. September fourth, all the contracts will be counting against the salary cap, as you said. Right. right? Yeah. So, so I mean, it'll be irrelevant. But it's pretty funny to note. 
Yeah, that's, everybody's that's earmarking the second quarterback in the defense is not even part of the salary. He's cap. not even part of the salary. <laughs> yeah, but it it's interesting enough. But you brought you brought up a great point. They do have a lot of guys on their team, and you're going to have ten picks to start the draft. Mm. And but I think you want to bring in two, maybe three impact players in free agency, right. and they don't have to spend all of their money. No. Initially, because you, know, you got the two, you got this year, next year, you got to try to do that. So it could be there's there's going to be some guys that aren't going to be here next year, and you, you figure you probably ballpark maybe eight to ten guys that probably won't make right. it into next year. You're talking about, um, you know, maybe McCoy won't be here, maybe Ivory uh, won't, be maybe here. Hughes won't be here, and certain guys. So you got to try to rebuild and get those guys their right. replacements in this year right. so that they're ready to go next year. Right. So all of that stuff is on the table and ready to be discussed, and I cannot wait. Agency tomorrow. I just, it's, it's so much fun. I know. It's so chaotic. And you're like, you, you're going to say this 600 times tomorrow. Can you believe this guy went there? Yeah. Oh, if you are not, we could have had him for this. If you are not on Twitter, get a Twitter and only <laughs> follow Ian Rappaport, only follow Adam Schefter, only follow Ron Jaworski, only follow like five guys. <laughs> That's it. Go on to Twitter. You know what? Maybe just make a fake Twitter so that way you can get rid of all the nonsense that's going to happen otherwise. And oh, just yeah. follow those guys because it's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. It's going to be hard to keep up with because everything's going to change. You might see something say, oh, you know, looks like this guy's going to sign here. And then an hour later, like, well, this guy actually decided to go visit this team too today. So we're going to see where this goes. It gets crazy. It's so much fun. Ah! <laughs> Sounded like Ryan Fitzpatrick during the touchdown. <laughs>